After the bloodbath, what do you think the fourth quarter is going to bring? Are we going to see further losses, or you're, are you starting to see yeah. a bottom now? I mean, uh, in terms of valuations, right? You can uh, you mentioned that the, the drawdown has been uh, over forty percent. Um, you, you look at the price to earnings ratios for the top companies; they've come off uh, by about twenty five percent, and along with that, uh, earnings revisions of about twenty to twenty five percent downwards. Uh, not all of the earnings revision is uh, from you know, the so called regulatory headwinds, but in part because um, the the entire industry is going through an investment cycle as well, you, you would know in groceries, community group purchase and so on. But what we do have here is a sector that's looking very cheap, um, especially if you compare it with the US tech companies, right? Um, I think uh, it clearly it's supportive if you are kind of a longer term investor in space. So are you saying that there, there actually are screaming buys right now? What areas of yeah. the sector do you actually think are quite attractive? I, I, well, we don't advocate that uh, you go in aggressively right now and buy everything, right? Because clearly, I think the regulatory uh, issues are still there, the uncertainties are still there. And with every uh, headline piece of news, you see uh, share price choppiness, right? But uh, what we are seeing is uh, opportunities emerging uh, uh, for uh, selective areas, right? So, for example, uh, with the antitrust crackdown, you can imagine that uh, second-tier players in, say, e-commerce or online games or even online music can benefit from, from these rules. And uh, even the market leaders, right, and let's not forget that these are companies with long-term uh, structural uh, uh, demographic tailwinds behind them and uh, very strong uh, entry barriers. And these companies have gotten sold off um, by, by a significant amount, right, 40, 50 percent. So they, they can look very attractive as well. Uh, and also, I think within the space, uh, there are companies who uh, who are aligned to Beijing's technological uh, long-term goals in yeah. AI in semiconductors, for example, and these are all opportunities because the entire space has gotten so well. Uh, in this I was going to ask you, are, are, it's been a couple months now that we've seen the, the, this tech crackdown. Are, are you starting to yeah. find common threads here on, on which companies are yeah. doing the things that the government likes and companies that are still going to face a lot of government pressure? Right, right. So I think, uh, well, first of all, right, um, on the regulatory crackdown, right? Uh, I think it's becoming clearer that uh, the issues that the Chinese government or regulators are trying to tackle are not unique to China. So um, we've seen uh, the, the protection of children, uh, financial uh, stability, uh, trying to promote uh, uh, social stability, antitrust measures, cyber security, data security, and so on. These are all issues which governments around the world are trying to tackle. Right? But what we can say is that perhaps um, the communication could have been better, uh, the, the implementation could have been more progressive, but it, it, it's it's pretty much spooked uh, the markets, right? Um, and we do know that uh, there will be uh, further upcoming uh, scrutiny on um, cyber security and data security that's going to be uh, personal information protection law that's going to be passed uh, into effect in, in November. Um, so th there are areas that we should clearly uh, be, be uh, more cautious about, like, for example, uh, online advertising companies, uh, which depend a lot on personal user data. Um, yeah. I think that there will be a period of adjustment. Yeah. They saw gaming stocks are very much in focus once again. There was this yeah. SCMP report uh, just this week talking about how we haven't seen new video gaming licenses, uh, new approvals in, in about two months, right. and, and potentially there's new lines that these companies need to make uh, in order to get the green light now. How are you yes. viewing that sector right now? Do you think that mm. this is just going to be a slowdown in approvals, or is it going to be a freeze? Yeah, I don't think uh, it's uh, going to be a freeze like what we saw back in 2018. The delay in approvals is likely due to uh, the, the need to examine these games uh, uh, more closely to make sure that they are aligned and comply with the new regulations uh, on uh, the, the amount of playing time that children can have. And by children, in China, we mean uh, people who are younger than 18 years old. Uh, they are restricted to playing just three hours uh, uh, every week. And uh, uh, on that front, I think uh, 
Clearly, the larger game publishers and developers have an advantage. They have uh, the resources uh, and the technology to put in place uh, the kind of checks that the regulator wants. And they also already have uh, strong game franchises that are uh, running and making money while they wait for the new games to be launched. I think uh, uh, the guys uh, who can be hurt by a delay in approvals will be the smaller developers and game publishers.